Once upon a time, many years ago, music was stored on things like this. Now, that's going back a long, long time. I don't know if you're actually a CD user. You might be from an era where CDs are kind of an old-fashioned thing already, but I grew up in a time where CDs were the main way of storing and purchasing music. And so I, like potentially you, have many, many, many CDs, most of which, or in fact all of which, have been ripped to my computer and are now all sitting in CD folders up in a cupboard somewhere. But then along came shit audio and produced the erd here. This is a CD transport and USB hub digital to digital converter type device. And it might just change the way you interact with your CDs if you're like me and you still own some, or if you're tempted to go out and buy some new ones. The big question, of course, is whether it sounds any different to just having regular streamed music or local music on your hard drive. And so that's what I'm going to try and answer for you today. The Erd is a 1299 US dollar CD transport and kind of digital to digital converter USB hub type thing. And so it's pretty unique in the market and it's going to have a fairly niche group of people that are really going to be interested in it. But hopefully today I can give you a sense of where and how I think it might fit your system, if at all, and also of course how it performs. And to get things started, I think we're going to start straight in with the device tour today because that's really going to help you understand what's going on here. Looking at the front of the device, we've got the CD tray, which you saw me put a CD in at the beginning. It's a lovely tray loading system as opposed to some sort of a slot loading system. It's a nice, solid interaction. It's also a very high quality CD transport rather than a data drive designed for, say, a PC or similar. Now, whether that means anything in terms of sound quality, we'll talk about that a bit later on. But that's definitely one of the claims to fame of the Erd. It's also worth noting that the way this is set up, being a dedicated audio CD transport, means that it will only play Redbook CDs, meaning that you can't put in a disc full of MP3s or WMAs or FLAC files. None of those data discs are going to work. I haven't tested it with a, a writable CD. I don't know if it's going to work for writable CDs. I actually don't own any anymore to test them. But with any professionally recorded and released, properly produced CD, it's going to drop right into here and play no problems at all. From there, as we look at the front panel, and there's a bit of weight to this because it's got a proper toroidal transformer inside, as I understand it. In fact, I think it's got two separate linear supplies, one for the transport and one for the digital hub side of things, if I remember correctly. I don't get too caught up on that sort of stuff. What matters to me is how well it works, and I'll get to that shortly. But the point is it's got a bit of weight because there's a lot going on inside the Erd. And as we look at what else you've got on the front panel, we've got a series of controls here. As you'd expect, being a CD transport, this needs a stop button, which is also your eject button. It needs a forwards and backwards skipping button and a play button, which is also your pause button. We've then got a remote control sensor there and the remote control is just here. The remote control has all the buttons you would need. It's the same as along the front panel here. And the nice thing is that because it's held together with magnets, those same magnets allow you to connect it permanently like so to the side of the device. So you always know where to find it. Moving on from the remote control sensor, we've then got two final buttons. One of them is to choose the input you're listening to, and the other is to choose the output that you're using. Then we've got this lovely display here. It's very, very simple, but also very clear and easy to interact with. What it's going to show you is obviously playback status of the CD, which track you're on and how far through the track you are. But then also it's going to show you which input you're using. And the inputs could either be the CD or the inputs on the back that I'm about to show you in a second and then which output you're using as well. So let's go to the back and look at those. On the back of the device here, what you'll notice is things are pretty sparse. There's not a lot going on, but what is going on is pretty unique. First of all, let's get the simple stuff out of the way. We've got a mains power socket here with the power switch, as usual in Shit's custom style, the power switch is on the back. Having said that, this is a device that you probably want to leave on all the time. 
And the reason for that is that it's going to take USB inputs and give USB outputs. And so it sort of becomes a hub within your system if you choose to use it that way. And to make that clearer, if we now jump over to this side, what we've got here are two USB-C inputs. And so what you can do is plug two different USB devices into the ERD and have a total of three different inputs available. You can play back CDs through the CD transport. You could have your computer connected through one of these sockets. You could then have your, say, a streamer device connected through the other input. And then what we've got in terms of outputs is USB-C. We've got a spit of coaxial and also AES. And so just to boil this down for you, what this means is you can have any of those three inputs I just mentioned playing. You can choose which one, in other words, CD or either of the USB-C inputs. And then you can send whatever's playing through the input out through either the USB or through the coaxial slash AES. Both the coaxial and the AES will run at the same time. And then you can toggle across to the USB-C if you want to. And so I think the key use case I can see for this is that you would take your DAC, whatever DAC that might be, I've largely used this with Shit's own Yggdrasil DAC. You can take that DAC and you can connect it up using whichever output here you want to. Potentially, you could also connect up a couple of DACs should you want to. Maybe you've got one running off USB-C, one running off coaxial, and then another off AES if you want to. But then the key thing is, whatever's connected here to the DAC, that DAC might be your main DAC in use. Let's say you're just running it with an Yggdrasil, for example. You can then connect up your streamer through one USB socket, and maybe you've got your PC or some other device that's maybe your multimedia, movie watching type of system. So in other words, not so much a dedicated music system because that's what your streamer might be doing. This could be your secondary kind of, as I said, PC for gaming, watching movies, things like that. And then of course, you've also got the CD transport as a third input. And so now all three of those inputs can be fed out to the DAC of your choice via the output of your choice. Again, AES, coaxial, or USB. And so that's really where I see a product like the ERD coming into play. If you've got a system anything like mine, it's really handy to be able to have the streamer connected and a PC connected, and then have the ability to play CDs should you want to. Of course, others might want to keep things really simple and just use this as a CD transport with USB output, and then also be able to connect up whatever your other music source is, a streamer or a PC. And then you can just easily and quickly switch between the CD and the USB if you want to. And so in just a second, I'm going to talk you through how this performs sonically through a number of different connections, because that's a big question, of course. But before we get there, I do want to raise two minor kind of gripes slash concerns. And one of them may or may not be a big deal for you, depending on how you're getting set up. The first one, and this is a very minor issue that may come up for some people if you're one that likes to skip to specific tracks on CDs... The minor issue that I've got is that the display is showing you which track the CD is reading currently and not the one that you've skipped to. And what I mean by that is that let's say you wanted to jump to track eight on your CD. You'd put the CD in, it would start playing, and you'd go click, 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 click seven times to jump from track one through to track eight. The problem is that the display is still going to be stuck on track one until the CD transport actually maneuvers itself into position to start reading track eight. Now, the reason that could be a slight issue is that you don't know until the CD gets there if you happen to stop on the right track. And so you might have clicked seven times, maybe you clicked six times, maybe you weren't sure if one of the clicks registered, and there is a bit of a lag and a delay before you get confirmation. As I said, it's a really, really minor thing, and if you're anything like me with a device like this, you're not looking at it as a device to skip through different tracks on CDs so much as to put in a CD and enjoy an album. And so I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but I did want to mention it. The other slight challenge that I've had with the ERD is in connectivity. And it's probably due to Rune, I think, because it didn't seem to happen when I ran my music through JRiver. But because Rune likes to identify the downstream DAC that it's working with, what I found was that when I tried to run the ERD with, say, my M scaler, or even also I've got the Topping D70 Pro behind me here that's coming up for review soon, what I found was that if I was running through Rune, Rune didn't like me having the ERD connected as my first stage of connections and then feeding out through USB and into the D70 Pro or the M scaler or whatever it might have been. Of course, if you're using AES or coaxial, there's no issues here because there's not two-way communication. But if you did want to have USB coming into here, going out to a different USB DAC, and you're running that DAC connected also to Rune, or Rune's looking for that DAC, and I haven't played around with all the permutations of how you might connect it up and set it up within Rune, 
but do be aware there might be a little bit of fiddling involved to get it all to work properly. And what I might do after this review, because I've only really just gotten to the bottom of what's going on and I didn't want to delay the review any further, what I might do at the end is go through and do one last little test where I remove something like the M scaler from Rune altogether and then see if I can get it to play out to the Erd, not looking for the M scaler and still get it to work. So check the comments down below. I'll pin a comment or I'll put something in the description to let you know if I'm able to get it to work properly and how I got there. But those are my only real concerns with the Erd. In all other ways, it works really, really well. Personally, I would have liked to see a USB-A socket on the back as well as a USB-C or instead of a USB-C. And the reason for that, and I'm talking about the output here, the reason for that is that for many DACs out there that still have USB-B connections, finding a USB-C to USB-B cord was a little bit fiddly and it didn't give me very many options when I looked on Amazon. I'm also, as many of you will know, a fan of better quality cables. And so therefore, you're also going to be limited by the cables available going from USB-C to USB-B. If you've got a USB-C DAC, then USB-C to USB-C is getting pretty common. I don't know how many audio file cables there are with that setup as yet, but I do know that there's plenty of options online for different styles, different lengths, etc. If you're not worried about having an audio file cable, but you just want one that's the right length, the right style, etc. And so with all that set up out of the way now, let's jump to how the ERD performs in terms of the sonic performance, how you might connect it up differently, what impact it might have on the sound. Let's cover off all of those things. And of course, how the CD transport performs. Unfortunately, I no longer own any other sorts of CD players. I thought I still had an old Sony Blu-ray player around the house that I was going to test up against the ERD, but unfortunately I didn't have it anymore. So I can't tell you exactly how this performs versus a generic CD player, DVD player type device. But suffice to say that when I compared the Sony Blu-ray way, way back against streaming or my local PC files, there was absolutely no benefit to be heard from the Blu-ray player. And I don't remember, maybe even the local or stream files were better, I don't recall. But the point is, there was no point keeping the Blu-ray player because it offered no benefits. And so one of my first tests was to see how did the CD transport in here compare to streaming the file direct to my PC. And so the way that I had this set up was I had Cobas streaming into my PC using Rune. From my PC, it fed out to the ERD, and then that allowed me to send it from the ERD through AES into the shit Yggdrasil. What that then meant was that I could also play the same CD that I'd found online and also run that CD at the same time and switch quickly and easily between the streamed copy of the file and also the local CD transport playback. I went through a number of tracks on this one to make sure that I didn't end up with a different master for the stream version compared to the local CD that I was playing. And what I found is I played a stream copy of a file and then the local CD copy all going through the ERD and out to the Iggy was that there was a very slight difference between the streamed version and the CD version. And it was very slight, but it was definitely there. The streamed version seemed a bit flatter in sound. It didn't have the same sense of kind of space, three-dimensionality, and overall sense of dynamics, I guess you'd call it. But I would call out that it was a pretty subtle difference. It didn't have me thinking that this had completely transformed my listening experience. But what I would definitely say without a doubt and without hesitation was that if I was given the choice between the CD version and the online version, I'd listen to the CD version every time. Now, of course, it's less convenient than the online version. Just going through Rune or Cobas and having it streamed direct is so simple and easy. You've got all that library at your fingertips. But for me, definitely, if I wanted to just enjoy an album and I was in a position to store my CDs nearby, I would absolutely reach every single time to put the disc in the tray of the Erd and sit back and enjoy better sound. It's without a doubt better. It's hard to say exactly what's different. As I said, there's a bit more separation in the sound. There's a bit more of a sense of three-dimensionality. Each note has a bit more sense of kind of weight and substance to it, and the space between each sound is slightly greater. But it is a subtle shift only. That led me to a second test, and that was to see if there was any difference using a local, securely ripped copy of the same CD against the CD transport. And so what I mean by that is if you're using software like JRiver, for instance, you can set up the CD ripping so that it does a check to make sure that it's an absolutely bit perfect rip. Once you do that, in theory, what's stored on the hard drive of your computer should absolutely match what's coming off the CD in the CD transport. For this test, the track I used was called Whip the Mule by John Schofield. And the first challenge that I had was there was a significant difference between the local file, the, the ripped file, and the CD transport version. The volume was about 8 decibels higher coming out of the Erd, 
And I'm going to put that down to the fact that in the ripping process, maybe there's some normalization being done. I don't know how this particular CD was being ripped. As in, I don't know the settings that I used at the time. I do know it was a secure rip because that's all I ever do. But I don't know if there was some sort of normalization and volume leveling being applied. And I mean in the rip here because I don't use volume leveling through Rune. But what I can definitely say is that going back and forth between the CD version and the hard drive version, once I matched the volumes, the difference was basically insignificant. And I say basically insignificant because there might have been a slight difference, but I also might have been hearing things. By the time I switched the volumes each time, it delayed me being able to do really rapid switching. And then beyond that, if there was a slight difference, and I thought maybe there was, but it was so tiny that I could have just been hearing things. When I did the streaming test that I just spoke about before, and I did that first, that was a clear and obvious difference. When I got to the local hard drive versus CD, then I couldn't say there was clearly a difference. There might be, but if it's there, it's absolutely tiny. And it's so tiny that I couldn't pick which was better. They might have just been a tiny bit different. And so where this is leading me to so far is that having the hard copy CD, in my opinion, is absolutely better than using a streaming service if you're running a high quality transport like the Erd, but I don't know that it necessarily beats a high quality rip onto your hard drive. However, everything we've tested so far has been very much about PC-based listening. And so the next thing I wanted to try was seeing if putting the Erd in the mix with the PC was different or better than putting the Erd into the mix with a dedicated streamer. Connecting up the DMP-A6 from Eversolo, and a review for that one's coming soon, connecting that up to the Erd as one of the USB inputs, and then also having my PC connected to the other USB input, what I was then able to do was feed from Rune the same exact feed out to the DMPA6 and also direct to the ERD. From there, I could have exactly the same files playing. And what I found from there was that all this was really doing was giving me the ability to switch between the two devices. There was a difference in sound, but it was much more about the difference between the output from my PC and the output from the ERD. Keeping in mind that my PC is optimized for streaming audio, I've got a dedicated USB card and a dedicated LAN card, and I mean audio file cards. And putting that up against the DMPA6, it was great because I had a fantastic switching tool in the ERD, but I don't feel like the ERD really changed anything in the test. The only thing it allowed me to do was have a consistent path from the moment the signal arrived in the ERD, it always went through the same output path and into the DAC, again being the Iggy with AES connection. And so this kind of more is about highlighting the use case I said before, where you might want to have a streamer for your dedicated music and maybe use the ERD as your switching tool between your PC and your music streamer. And so that kind of leads me to one final test. And that is that the ERD is also a digital to digital converter, meaning that you can take a USB input and send out AES, coaxial, or a different USB output. Along the way, you're passing through shit's fantastic unison USB circuit, and that means it's galvanically isolated. And so that means you're not going to be getting any electrical noise coming out of whatever your USB source is going through the ERD and then out to the DAC. It's going to be isolated when it hits the ERD and isolated again when it leaves the ERD. And so my next test was to see what happens if I feed a signal out of my PC direct to a DAC via USB and then compare that to going via the ERD along the way. So the ERD becomes a digital to digital converter and essentially a USB isolator listening to Bones by Michael Kiwanuka, as I listened to it first and foremost using my high quality USB output from the PC, and then comparing that to going via the ERD, what I heard there was no real difference, and that's what you'd expect. I've done tests in the past with other digital to digital converters, and having the internal cards in your PC is about the same in terms of quality and performance as an external digital to digital converter. In both cases, they're making sure you don't get a whole lot of noise transmitted through your USB. However, when I then moved over to using a generic USB socket on the motherboard of the PC, that connected directly to the DAC was clearly inferior to going via the ERD. And so this is where the ERD starts to bring extra value to the picture. You can clean up your signal from whatever your USB source is just by passing it through this guy. And again, I'm not suggesting it's doing anything fancy in terms of reclocking or resampling or anything like that. It's just taking the USB signal and isolating it from any upstream noise or interference. Depending on the DAC, this is going to have more or less impact. I found that using it with something like the shit Yggdrasil, which already has the same level of galvanic isolation as the ERD does, 
There was a very slight difference, and I'm not entirely sure why that was. It could have come down to the interconnects and connections I was using. But having said that, I experienced a very similar thing when I used the Singer SU6 DDC, which is my kind of regular go-to DDC. And so the ERD is going to improve, I think, any DAC system if you don't have any kind of early filtering like a PC card for your USB. The ERD seems to be able to improve the sound from any DAC at all if you insert it in the chain. But where it's going to be most beneficial is if you've got a DAC that doesn't have any galvanic isolation, that's where the ERD really shines. It can completely isolate sources of noise and give you a much better, much cleaner sounding system. And specifically what you're going to hear is a better sense of space in the music, very similar to what I described from using the CD transport versus the stream signal. More space in the sound, more sense of depth and layering because there's less kind of noise in the sound to actually get in the way of hearing those cues. You're also going to get more refinement in the sound, so the top end is going to be a bit smoother, but still plenty detailed. It's just going to clean up the signal overall and make it a more enjoyable listen. It's not a total transformation of the audio, it's just an improvement of what's already there. And so for me, where the ERD really sits in terms of who it's for and where it has value, it's for two sorts of people, and there might be overlap here, you might be both of these. But the first is if you want a CD transport, you want it to be high quality, and you want to integrate it into a USB-based audio system. Now, of course, you can output the CD signal through the AES or the spit of coaxial output. There's no issues there. So you don't have to be using a USB DAC for this one. But my point is, because of the USB inputs, it sort of makes sense to go in the middle of a chain to insert the CD alongside other USB devices. The second place I see the ERD making sense is for those of you that need a digital-to-digital -digital converter. Being able to have two USB inputs going out to a single USB output or converting it entirely into some sort of spit of connection, coaxial or AES, that's another really nice value of the ERD. I don't know that it's necessarily worth $1,299 just for the DDC functionality, but having said that, I'm yet to see another device like this one with the two USB inputs. Being able to switch between two USB inputs and the CD is really unique. And so just coming back around, it's worth me restating the fact that the sound from the CD in the ERD, so the transport in other words, was absolutely sublime. It's one of those sounds that I keep thinking about, I want to keep going back and listening to it again, because it just sounded so good. I don't know if I stated that clearly enough before, that I don't think it's a massive leap ahead of something like a locally stored hard drive file, but it was just a really lovely experience being able to put in a CD and hear it sound as good, as smooth, as liquid, as resolving as it was. And so I think the ERD is really a product for those of you like me with CD collections or an interest in buying some new CDs. That's absolutely where it shines. But then adding on the DDC functionality and the ability to integrate multiple switches between inputs and outputs, that is absolutely gold in my opinion as well. So as I said at the beginning, this is very much a niche product, but I think it's a fantastic product in the niche. It's unique, it performs incredibly well, it's a pretty seamless approach. I think the ERD is an absolute winner for those that need this sort of a device. There'll be plenty of you out there that think it's a waste of money and you'd never need this. That's totally fine, I understand. But for those of you that do see value in a CD transport, this thing's brilliant. And so as always, I hope you found this video useful, helpful, and informative. If you have, please hit the like button and please subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. <laughs>